In this video, we're going to prove that this is a Cauchy sequence. So recall a sequence is Cauchy if its terms get closer and closer together. So we say sequence, say, so x sub n is Cauchy, Cauchy, if for every epsilon greater than zero, we can find a positive integer, say n, there exists an n in the set of positive integers. So this means uh, exist n belonging to the set of positive integers such that the distance between x sub n and x sub m can be made small. How small? Well, less than epsilon for all epsilon. In other words, it can be made arbitrarily small. So in this problem, we're going to prove that this is a Cauchy sequence. Um, I think uh, let's just go through the scratch work carefully and then we'll do the proof. I was trying to think if I can do it at the same time as I prove it, and I think I'd be better off just going through the scratch work. So let's go through the scratch work together. So scratch. So the goal is to find uh, an n such that when you look at this difference, it's less than epsilon. So let's see here. So we're looking at x sub n minus x sub m. That's the goal. And so this is equal to the magnitude or the absolute value uh, uh, from 1 to n of cosine t over t squared dt minus, and then the integral from 1 to m of cosine t over t squared dt. Okay, and we're looking at this, and we're trying to make this uh, less than epsilon. So what do we do here? Let's use the first fundamental theorem of calculus. The first fundamental theorem of calculus says that to integrate this, it's, it's f of b minus f of a. I don't know if you remember that from, from math. If you have f of x dx from a to b, this is big F of b minus big F of a, where big F is an antiderivative for little f. So I don't know how to integrate this, um, so let's just call it um, big F of n minus big F of 1 minus, and then this will be big F of little m minus big F of 1, where big F is an antiderivative for this. This would be our little f here, so it's our little f of t. Okay, so the negative f of 1 and the positive f of 1 will cancel here. So this will be equal to the absolute value of fn minus fm. But now using the fundamental theorem of calculus again, we can go backwards, right? f of b minus f of a, well, that means the b goes up top. So that means the n goes up top. Oh, that's cool. And the m goes in the bottom. And this is cosine t over t squared. Yeah, we should be able to figure this out. It's good. It's good. This is less than or equal to, you can put the absolute value inside. So this is m, n. And then it's the absolute value of this whole piece here. But the t squared is already positive, so it'll just be the absolute value of cosine t over the absolute value of t squared, but we can drop it. The absolute value of cosine t is less than or equal to 1, so this is less than or equal to, this is mn, 1 over t squared, dt. We can integrate this by writing it as t to the negative 2, dt, going from n to n, going kind of fast. Integrating this, we add 1. It's t to the negative 1 over negative 1. So that's negative 1 over t. This is negative 1 over t. And this is m to n. You plug in the n first, you get negative 1 over n minus, but it's already a minus, so it's plus 1 over m. This is 1 over m minus 1 over n. This is less than or equal to 1 over m, right? n and m are positive integers here because, um, so if this is 1, I mean, this is going to be 1, something minus something, so this will always be true, no matter what, because you're subtracting something, right? If you have a, a number minus another positive number, that's smaller than just the number, right? No matter what. So that should be true, and we want this to be less than epsilon. That's the goal, right? Because we want it to be less than epsilon. So that means that we want 1 over m less than epsilon. So that means that we want 1 less than m epsilon. In other words, dividing by epsilon, we want 1 over epsilon less than m. Or in other words, m bigger than 1 over epsilon. The n here doesn't uh, seem to matter, right? It doesn't seem to matter at all. Uh, it goes away in the process. Okay, so now we can write the proof. So proof. 
going kind of fast. My uh, camera battery is dying, dying, so trying to go through it quickly. But uh, hopefully that makes sense and you can pause it and rewind it if you need to. But beautiful stuff, I think. So we'll start the proof by letting epsilon be greater than zero. So let epsilon be greater than zero. Then we can choose a natural number n. Uh, bigger than 1 over epsilon. We can do that using the Archimedean principle. It says that given any number, we can find a natural number that's bigger. So choose, via the property of Archimedes, a natural number n greater than 1 over epsilon. Then for all little n and m bigger than capital N, we're going to look at this distance here, x sub n minus x sub n. And we know using some math, that this is less than or equal to 1 over m minus 1 over n. And we know that this is less than or equal to 1 over m. And then let's be a little pro here. So note, m is bigger than n, which is bigger than 1 over epsilon. So when you get here, it's not necessary to do it, but I personally think it's good. So now we have that m is bigger than 1 over epsilon. So multiplying by epsilon and dividing by m at the same time, that means that epsilon is bigger than 1 over m. It est. 1 over m is less than epsilon. So we have, let's, let's reiterate what we just did, x sub n minus x sub m, less than or equal to 1 over m. And we just clarified that that is indeed less than epsilon. And that proves that the sequence is a Cauchy sequence. I hope this video has been helpful. I got to cut it short because my battery's dying. But yeah, pretty cool stuff. Take care.